question is, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the honourable member for read. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Well, there's nothing quite like following a commercial giant, and unfortunately, uh, I don't have the option of doing that today. I'm following the member for Oxley. Uh, what I would love to do today, I, I would love firstly to commend the member for Mitchell for proposing this motion, but secondly, to talk a little about both the structure of the way the government is attacking this. And I notice I'm to be followed by the, uh, the member for Parramatta, who I do believe is the uh, parliamentary secretary for small business, and a shadow parliamentary secretary for small business, and does have a small business background. And uh, I would imagine she's pretty lonely in the committee meetings, because if a tree falls in the uh, Labor forest, no one often hears. Uh, what I would like to do is talk about and, and praise the way the PM has, has attacked this. The agenda and the difference it will make in the small business sector. And I want to focus on SMEs. We have an employment and an underemployment problem yeah. in this country. And it will not be solved by big business, to which the member for Oxley repeatedly referred. And I don't blame him because he comes from a union background and they engage with big business day in, day out. This will be covered by SMEs, as it always has been and it always will be. And that is why this reform agenda is so important. The Prime Minister has seen fit to run this agenda out of his own portfolio. And in doing so, he has found the most capable man in the member for Kuyong and made him parliamentary secretary and tasked him with solely this responsibility. And it's an honour to be able to work with him on the New South Wales side, as I have done over the past six months, to make a real difference. Because how this plays out, 70 per cent, the most recent figures, 70 per cent of the employment in this country is carried out by SMEs. It's not unionised. They are not unionised. 18 per cent of the workforce is unionised. They deal with big business. Yep. The underemployment and unemployment problem that we face as this, at this country will not be solved by government, it will not be solved by big business and it will not be solved by unions. It will be solved by small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah, yeah. And the best way that government can treat this sector is by getting out of their way, by giving them an environment in which they can, with confidence, take on bank debt back themselves and employ people. And there is no better illustration, if you want to see what we should be doing first and foremost, as someone that comes from small and family business background, that can speak definitively on the topic, not read it in a textbook, like the former Doctor of Economics Craig Emerson, who said in 2008 he promised to take a pair of giant pair of scissors to red tape. And we all know what happened. What happens on the ground and how this plays out the best example is the carbon tax. It attacks every expense in the profit and loss statement of every business in this country, irrespective of size. And it is a multiplier effect. It, it passes through the supply chain so that the eventual supplier of the service to the consumer is in a position where costs are ratcheted up on a multiplied basis. Now, traditionally, business would treat expense increases by raising their prices, i.e. maintaining their margins. Mm -hmm. However, we have come through six years where, at the same time of expenses ratcheting up under the former government, consumer confidence is shot to pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what has happened? Small and family business cannot pass those price rises on. And what happens as a result is they absorb the cost, they, may, they, keep, they lose margin, the EBITDA, the earnings before income tax, depreciation and amortisation decreases, and employment suffers. And I'll tell you how it plays out on the ground, Deputy Speaker, in Reid. Small and family business people work longer hours themselves, they augment their trading hours, they do, they do things that are criminal by nature, unfortunately, and pay cash. This is how it plays out on the ground. And this is why this reform agenda is so important, because the less time businesses can spend on compliance, on regulation, and it is multiplied through state and through local government. And I am pleased to say that the member for Kuyong has identified this and, I believe, is working hard with the Prime Minister to make this a COAG reform item agenda, because it is that important that we work with our state and local government counterparts. As someone that has faced red tape and regulation at all three levels of governments over the past 23 years, 
I not only commend the member for, member for Mitchell in what he's doing, more importantly, I commend the Prime Minister and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister for the agenda and for those opposite to sit here and belittle what we do shows the ignorance they have of the sector we promote and will get us out of the trouble we find ourselves in. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. I thank the member for Reid for his contribution and call.